Hey everyone, the PTS was just updated with some of the potential changes coming to the next patch, which I am personally pretty interested in, so in this video I'm going to check them out. We're going to be going over the normal bows, getting a rework, giving that that more 80 carry sort of deal with that dash, quarter staffs are getting two new abilities, and then I'll also be covering the Mage Cow rework. So starting with the normal bow, it's getting its E ability reworked. You now enchant five of your arrows for the next eight seconds. When you have those five arrows, your attack speed is increased by 50% and your normal attack damage is increased by 240% and each auto attack consumes one arrow. And then you can recast the ability within eight seconds to do this little sidestep dodge sort of thing in a direction which enchants you three more arrows. However, you cannot exceed the five arrow maximum. So you have to like fire three of them and then dodge to get the, the max value. So first impressions after using this, it's pretty cool. It definitely feels better and more interesting than the old bow, but not as much as I had hoped for. Uh, it's basically just the same. It feels the same as the old bow, except now you have like this little roll. In terms of how strong it felt or I think it's going to be, honestly, it felt like basically just a worse version of the current normal bow. Basically, you have much lower potential because the overall damage of the E is lower. It has lower uptime than the other E, so you're not going to be dealing as much damage. The damage doesn't have to ramp up anymore, but that old ramped up damage was much higher than the current damage. So it, the old bow just did way more damage than this new bow is. And the only thing you're getting in return is this roll, which isn't too far of a roll. It's not too fast of a roll, so you can't like use it to position and dodge move super easily and it's also not an iframe so in terms of actually like dodging moves and iframing them and stuff it's not really helpful for that it's more of a sort of mini repositional tool it's also not quite what i'd hoped in terms of when they said it was going to feel more similar to mobas as you can't really attack move the attack speed steroid is still too high and albion's just the way it works is that you can't really do attack moving you're going to lose tons of damage if you try to attack move so you kind of just have to sit there and auto attack the exact same as the old bow also, in terms of how strong I think it's going to be, or it was on the PTS, is that it does lower damage overall, and there's no more pierce on the bow. It used to have a pierce as you stacked it up. Now there's no pierce on it, so it's going to be much weaker at killing, like, frontliners. It used to be very good, because you could just sit in a safe spot and basically kill anybody. It doesn't matter if they were a tank or a squishy. Now you're not really going to do that much damage to tanks. Really, very minimal damage to tanks, actually. So in group play, it's probably going to be really bad in PvP. It's probably oriented more towards solo now and we'll kind of just have to see how good it is for that. Last but not least, one thing I noticed with this new normal bow is the way that the cooldown works is a little bit weird. So it has a 12 second cooldown if you don't roll and a 15 second cooldown if you do roll. However, if you don't roll, the cooldown starts as soon as you press E. If you do roll, the cooldown starts as soon as you roll. So effectively, the cooldowns aren't 12 and 15, the cooldowns are 12 and then more like 18 or 20. Really, if you want to maximize overall DPS with the bow, you have to either not roll or shoot three arrows right away and then immediately roll. I think they might be going for some like skillful do you roll for the roll but longer cooldown or do you not roll for more damage but I, I don't know I don't know how I feel about this it feels a little bit weird and I kind of wish the cooldown worked more simply like after the last arrow was shot or something because right now if you actually want to use the roll to like dodge something and you're waiting a long time you're really suffering on the damage. Really though, overall, I think the normal bow does feel a little bit better with this change and it's really just going to come down to the damage numbers. On the PTS, it felt weak, they could buff that for live, it could be balanced around with on its damage and it could be really strong. It's probably just going to come down to its raw damage, so who knows. It's a cool rework, I think the weapon is more better designed now than it was, still a little bit wonky, but in the right direction. Moving on to the quarterstaffs have two new abilities, one on the Q and one on the W. Starting with the one on the Q, it's called Whirling Strikes. You roll your staff around, dealing physical damage every 0.25 seconds in a 5 meter radius while channeling for up to 0.6 seconds, and you can move while channeling. Hitting at least one enemy with any one of these hits will put a stack on you, a stacking buff that reduces the ability's cooldown by 0.5 seconds for 5 seconds. 
So if you use this three times and get three stacks, it's basically up as much as it is down. The biggest thing I think for this new quarterstaff Q ability is it allows quarterstaffs to fame farm so much easier. Before quarterstaffs have classically been this weapon that has absolutely god awful mod killing because none of their Qs are good for damaging mobs, their Ws aren't very good for damaging mobs, this new Q is an absolute lifesaver. Uh, I was wondering when SBI was going to add some love to the more tank oriented weapon lines in terms of fame farming like they did with healing staves and looks like they're starting to do that with quarter staves. In terms of PvP, this ability feels insanely strong, it feels really good and will probably make quarter staves completely overpowered for at least solo play. Again, it's probably going to depend on just how much damage they settle on it doing, but the range is really big, it's really easy to connect at least one hit and get your stacks up, and quarter staves have this insane stickiness to them, it's so hard to get away from them, so it shouldn't be too hard to be able to consistently hitting these cues on people. This ability does seem honestly like really well designed for the quarter stabs kits, especially the ones that aren't oriented more towards that like group play tank weapons, but more like the solo play double bladed staff, normal quarter staff, stuff like that. Because quarter stabs have this like high mobility and CC, meaning they're incredibly sticky, and having a Q that benefits from you sticking on targets and constantly using it, being able to move while you use it, it just fits with that play style so well. That's basically why I predict this is probably going to make quarter stabs OP especially combined with the new W, which is also a three hit thing, meaning it combos with Mercenary Jacket super well, and the solo meta is currently the super brain dead builds that abuse Mercenary Jacket good things to run people down. It just fits with everything so perfectly that I, it would be really hard to add this ability into the next patch and not make quarter sub like super good in solo PvP. The damage would have to be horrendous. So overall, I like the ability. It's definitely a good addition. It fits super well with the quarterstaff line, but it is super dangerous when it comes to balance. They're gonna have to keep a very close eye on it. Personally, I might suggest having it do different damage to mobs versus players or something like that. But if the damage to players is too high, uh, yeah, this is gonna be stupid. Along with the new Q, there's a new W, Gale Dance, which swings your weapon up to three times in a targeted direction, dealing physical damage each hit. If an enemy is hit by all three swings, it will increase your move speed by 30% and your normal attack damage by 50% for 4 seconds. In terms of how this hits, you can see it hits in like this little rectangle box in front of you. Overall, this ability feels alright. Again, it's another great fame farm option for quarter stabs, which is really good. Combining this ability with a new Q, I think quarter stabs are going to be able to fame farm very effectively now as a solo players and even as a group more. In terms of its PvP capabilities, though, generally attack steroids like auto attack steroids and Albion just kind of suck especially on melee weapons, so its effectiveness is really going to come down to how much damage it does. The move speed is also really nice, but quarter subs already have other W options with good move speed that are much more reliable, like stun run, so it's going to come down to what does the damage look like and how reliable is it to actually hit on opponents. It does have the highest overall potential for damage of Ws and quarter stuff, so it definitely has potential. Right now, just based on the numbers looking at it on the PTS, it's probably going to be more matchup specific than anything. In matchups where it's more like brawly and you can get those three hits off more reliably, it'll probably be the best option, but against more like kitey opponents that are going to be able to get out of it, uh, probably not as good. Overall though, again, just purely as a good option for fame farming for quarter stabs, it's a good addition. Last but not least, we have the Mage Cow rework. They removed the poison ability and added a fire breath ability, which basically just does damage in a cone in front of you to every enemy hit, and it does slightly less damage than the old Mage Cow poison did. So, judging this new ability is just like super weird. Uh, the old Mage Cow ability was definitely problematic, really busted, and just a horrible game design. So, it's a really, really good thing that they removed it. I'm really glad about that. But this new ability is just, why would they change it to this? I don't understand. It is so useless. The function of this Mage Cow is it is a cloth helmet that does damage in an area of effect. We already have a cloth cowl that does damage in an area of effect, the Cowl of Purity. So not only did they just change it to something that already existed, but we have to compare it to the Cowl of Purity to see how good it is. And it's a little bit bigger of an AoE, but it has lower range, it's less damage, and it's damage over time which is worse, and the Cowl of Purity also has the ability to interrupt casts. 
So basically, they removed this super problematic ability, which is good, but they added an ability that's completely useless. There is literally no case where you would ever use the Mage Cowl over the Cowl of Purity, except if you're dirt poor and can't afford a Cowl of Purity and want to use a cheaper alternative. Now this is the PTS, so numbers could change and it could get more damage, more damage than the Cowl of Purity, but then why would you use the Cowl of Purity? Because the Interrupt honestly isn't that helpful. So I mean, it's just really poor design. I did hear that originally the rework was going to have some healing reduction added to the damage over time on the Mage Cow, which would actually ha give it a use case and make it slightly different than the Cow of Purity, so they definitely, definitely need to add that back or something like it, but right now I don't know why they got rid of it, it's just useless right now. I, yeah, I'm just... Anyways, I'm not really sure why I ended on the Mage Cow, because that's a real bummer to end on, but uh, uh anyways, these are the new abilities, hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and I'll see you next time. Right.